Welcome back to another Science at Home video with the Orangeville Public Library. Today we'll be making our very own Play-Doh and it's a super simple recipe so I hope you'll follow along. So first we'll be mixing our dry ingredients. I started with two cups of flour in a bowl and then I added a half a cup of salt. Next I added two tablespoons of vegetable oil or canola oil. And then I added two tablespoons of cream of tartar. So the next step is to give everything a good mix together to make sure that everything is well combined. So while I'm mixing that together, let's learn about what mixtures are. So mixtures are a substance that has different materials mixed together. In some mixtures, you can see the different parts, like pebbles of different sizes and colors mixed together. If you look closely at a piece of wood, do you see light and dark parts? Can you think of other mixtures you can see? For most mixtures though, you can't see the different parts because they are mixed as molecules which are too small to see. So now that our dry ingredients are combined, it's time to boil some water. You'll want to make sure you have an adult to help you with this as the water will be very hot. So once you've boiled about 1 or 2 cups of water, you can go ahead and add food coloring to it in a pot. I chose blue but you can choose any color that you want your play-doh to be. Once you add your food coloring in, make sure you give it a good mix and allow it to combine before adding it to your dry ingredients. It should look something like this, a nice solid color. Now it's time to add your boiling water to your mixture. You'll want to do this by adding just a little bit at a time and then mixing to make sure everything is combined properly. While you're completing this step, let's talk a little bit more about mixtures. When things are mixed together, their properties change, sometimes unexpectedly. Steel can be made harder or more flexible depending on what other materials are mixed in. Adding salt to water makes it taste different and also makes it freeze at a lower temperature. Can you think of other mixtures that change the properties of a material? Mixtures can be solid, liquid, or gas, and without mixtures we wouldn't have ice cream, or grass, or stars, or life, or even chocolate. You can continue adding a little bit of water at a time until your mixture gets to the consistency that you want. I had mine looking something like this, and then I left it to cool before I completed the final step of kneading my Play-Doh. While I waited for my mixture to cool, my dog came over to check out what I was doing. We waited until the mixture was cool enough to touch, and then got to kneading. Now it's time to knead our Play-Doh with our hands like you would knead dough for bread. If your dough is too sticky, you can add some more flour to help it get to the consistency that you want. Keep kneading until your Play-Doh is nice and soft and it feels ready to use. Your Play-Doh should look something like this once you're done kneading. Now it's time to get creative with your Play-Doh. I created some pancakes, a snake, and a snowman with mine. If you're interested in learning more about chemistry projects or even trying out some cooking recipes, make sure to check out these books and the other ones we have at the library. Thanks for watching and if you try this out, send us your photos. Have a great day!